Hi everyone, hope you're having a great damn week. If not, one I got that good cool twinkle twinkle little stars. Hopefully we can change that. Today we're going to be making a small river diorama with a rocky formation to the side. I'm not really sure what to call some of these. I usually just give them numbers and not really think about what it is. I hope you guys enjoy. We'll start by cutting out our pieces using the XPS foam. Make sure you're wearing a respirator if you're generating any fumes or a lot of particles if you're doing this. Some of these materials shouldn't be breathed in. In large quantities, that is. This is a pretty simple scene, so I just needed these three squares for my cliff. I wish I would have cut out more variety of the shapes, but... I like to brush my pieces with a wire brush before I glue them to help them stick together. I like to carve out my scene with a hot wire tool. You could use a knife as well, a hot wire tool is just more convenient and faster. One thing I wish I did was carve my cliff so it wasn't so square. My thinking has always been that the sculptor mold is going to create all the details in the scene so getting rid of the sharp edges was pretty pointless. But here I finally discovered that it would be better just to carve a little more character into the curves of my rocks before the mold w was applied. You'll see pretty soon the squareness of my rock. I still liked it in the end, but next time I'll be sure to correct this. I like to use sculpt mold on my scenes. I usually wing how much water or mold I use and I usually guess correctly without wasting much or forcing more than intended on my scene. Also I prefer using a popsicle stick to lay it down and form the scene. Here I was adding a more shallow side to create a path you could cross the river at. After about 3 days, depending on how wet your mold was, it should be dry. Next is the only tedious process I find out of this whole thing. I like to carve my cliffs or rocks once it's dry to get a more rocky look to it. I usually just try to highlight any existing or potential curves in the rock and get rid of any weird looking shapes in the rock. Next we can paint using some of this watered down burnt umber. I like to water it down so it'll completely cover up all the white spots in the scene. The initial painting is one of my favorite parts because it's just so smooth and simple I guess. I don't know how to describe it besides it being smooth.
thought you were ready to give up. I had some excess brown so I just applied it to my base since I'm painting it brown anyways later. I'm painting the base layer of my cliff with a grey paint that is mixed with a little bit of black. I really liked how it came out because it wasn't so bright like it usually is with a base grey color. And it didn't look completely white after painting in the video because of my lamp. I skipped the stone grey layer and went straight into the concrete color because my base layer wasn't so light. I do use the stone grey paint a little bit after this. I use a very light amount of this concrete and I'm just dabbing it on randomly around the rock. If you put too much it's cool because we'll be painting over the really light spots with the stone grey after this. Now for the stone grey. I use a relatively light amount of this paint as well. I'm just trying to blend it all together. My cliff also looks way lighter than it actually is so sorry for the illusion in space and time in the universe at this moment. And finally I use a extremely light amount of white paint to highlight my cliff's features. I just brush it on but again I barely use any of this white paint. Next, we can add our dirt to the scene with some diluted matte Mod Podge. Pushed 
I finally had a scene where I could use the excess little pebbles I gathered after sifting the dirt. I think they looked really nice in the river. I go over the rocks in the river with some scenic glue and isopropyl alcohol to make sure they're glued down properly. I like to figure out where I'll be putting most of my trees before I start putting down my static grass so I don't cover up the area where they should be. I wasn't sure how many trees I wanted so I just made a lot of holes. I did eventually put quite a few trees down. For my grass, I'll be using full strength matte Mod Podge and 2mm light green and 4mm green static grass, but I'll be putting down the light green grass first. Next I'll be using light green and green turf to mimic any smaller grasses or little tiny plants that could be on the ground.
and I'll be sealing the ground up with isopropyl alcohol and scenic glue again. I decided I wanted to put down my resin first so I'll be less likely to light my whole scene on fire because of the trees and whatever else when I'm trying to get rid of the bubbles from the resin. I'm using a brown opaque resin dye this time instead of blue. I really liked how my water came out so I'll probably be using this more in the future. I figured out where I was going to put each tree before I glued them in place and I just glued the trees in sections at a time with matte mod podge and the legendary toothpick. I used coarse light green turf and green foliage for my bushes. I think I'm finally making my bushes to a size I like. And once you have all that down, we can seal the scene with some isopropyl alcohol and scenic glue one last time. To create the ripples in my water, I'm using Mod Podge Gloss. I actually ended up redoing my ripples again with more glue, so this is kind of just a reenactment. Just do it however you want, but more glue will make your ripples more prominent in the river. And as a final touch, I'll be adding some sediment lines around the base of my scene. Thank you guys for watching, and if you enjoyed, feel free to like, comment, or subscribe.
make it a great week or die trying. Peace out.